Isaiah chapter 5, verse 16. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment. Great white throne judgment or the judgment seat of Christ for the Christian. God will be honored and God will be praised. The Bible tells us for the, for the lost man at the great white throne judgment, they will bow the knee and declare that Jesus is the Lord. Now, God is not on the thrones at the judgments. Jesus Christ is. At the great white throne judgment, the sinner that has rejected God doesn't even see God per se. He will see Jesus Christ. And when we are absent from the body or raptured in New Jerusalem, we will see God, never the sinner that's unrepentant. And even at the judgment seat of Christ, we will honor God, Jesus Christ, and exalt him whether we got gold, silver, precious stone, or we got wood, hay, or stubble. It's still going to be the honor and glory of God. We're there because of God, Jesus Christ. And at the great white throne judgment, they will exalt God. He's holy and he's right. Listen, it is not God that sends a man to hell. It is man that has rejected what God says. And that's what we're going to see throughout this chapter. There is a severe cause when men have taken the word of God And they despise it. Whether saved. Now saved. You won't lose your soul. You won't go to hell. But you'll lose reward. And if you're lost. If you despise the word of God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. You won't be saved. And you'll go to hell. And God will be honored. God will be exalted. And God that is holy. There you go shall be sanctified, set apart in righteousness. Never a Christian that has lost a reward. Go, uh, wood, hay, or stubble. Never a man that has gone off to hell, the great white throne judgment, will ever falsely accuse God or will God be falsely accused because God is holy and God is righteous. Now, people blame God all the time now. But they're not going to blame God at the judgment. And if they, if God does allow them to blame, they're, they're going to be found at fault. Then shall the lambs feed after their manner. They're going to eat like they, like they eat. There's no shepherd. The shepherd's missing. And the waste places of the fat ones shall strangers eat. What is waste to the fat ones? There is, there is uh, resources for strangers to eat. And we pick up from verse 8. There are six woes upon Israel. Verse 18. Woe unto them that draw iniquity. And in the pictures here, not drawing it with a pencil, but drawing it with, with a rope. They're pulling it. They're letting their iniquity follow them. It's a tag along. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords. We call it ropes. Of vanity. So here's a rope, a string of nothing pulling iniquity. And God says, woe to you that nothing to do with iniquity has any value, no reward in glory. You're... You're pulling your iniquity with nothing attached, but it's a string attached. And sin, as it were, a cart rope. 
It's a bird in time. On a cart, there's ropes. And ropes are used for tying things up and on. And you're drawing your iniquity with cords of nothing. And on a cart, you got your sins tied. You're ready to go for a haul. You're ready to go for a trip. That say, let him, God, make speed. Hurry up, God. Haste, hurry up. His work. Go ahead, God, judge us. Come on, God, judge us. And that's going around in the church age today. We want the Lord to come. Yeah, we're, we're to look for the blessed hope and the, and the glorious fear of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. All the, the Christians are saying it. We are in the times of prophecy and prophecy. Yeah, it's true. Honestly true. But do the Christians know the fact is once the rapture happens, then the judgment seat of Christ? Do Christians even know that they will be judged? Shall not, uh, what's the verse there? I can't quote it completely. But shall not judgment begin at the house of God? Some Christians believe once they die or the rapture happens, we go to heaven and we're fancy free and we got coon dogs and hound dogs and everything's just wonderful and great. And, and you know, the table before the Lord, big all kinds of food. And there are many Christians of the Laodicean church, they, they don't know what judgment's coming for us. The fact is, for them, many Christians, the rapture is just an escape out of the world. Out of their troubles, out of their bills. Out of their health problems. And yet, for me, a Bible-believing Christian, I love to, listen, the rapture is an escape to get out of all this worldly garbage and all that, but I've been plowing the fields. I have been stabbed by Christians and churches and ministries. And I'm bound and sick and tired of it. And the fact is, when I say, well, I want to go home, I'm tired. Oh, 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 oh. Paul said, listen, I have a desire to go be with the Lord, but it's needful for me to be with you. Paul wanted to go home. But he says it's needful. It's a purpose that I stay for you. I, I'm here. I wake up every day for the purpose of the Lord to use me. And I don't feel comfortable in this world. Because this world is not my home. But every day that the Lord gives me, I can use it for his honor and glory. But they say, come on, Lord, hurry up. Let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come, and we may know it. That's what they were saying to Jesus on the cross. Come on. He called for Elias. Well, let's see Elias come down and come and get him. And what was the judgment upon Jesus upon the cross? Our sins. There are people who are open in their mouth and Israel's open their mouth in Isaiah time and they don't realize what the next step is. You see, the problem is with Israel in Isaiah's time in the church today is they think they're doing right. But what did God say to the lad to see in church age? I've dealt with people. They think they're going to heaven because they said a prayer or whatever thing. They think they go to prayer because they, they're going to heaven because they eat and drink Jesus. They think they're going to heaven because they did, they done, they did. But you don't go to heaven by you did, you did, and you done. Come on, God, let's get it over with. Come on. And then some people wake up in hell. What am I doing here? You despise the word of God. There will be Christians at the judgment seat of Christ. Why don't I have nothing? Because you despise the word of God. 
There are Christians that say, Stala, you're foolish. What you, at the judgment seat of Christ, we'll find out who's foolish. When I've got crowned for being faithful and true to the word of God, and you thought you were faithful, you thought you were true to the word of God, but you despise the word of God. That judgment seat of Christ is going to reveal right and wrong by a holy and righteous judgmental God. And God's not going to give you credit because you were 40, 50, 60 years in ministry. And here's this guy who's never had a pulpit, never had a church or never. Okay. Come on, God, hurry up. Woe, number woe, verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. They redefine sin. Well, what, give us a worldly example of calling good evil and evil good. I'll give you a, I'll give you a church example. Never mind the world. The world's going to do what the world does. I thought you were going to be done. I, no, I'm not going to be done. Christmas and Easter are a pagan holiday. Even the worldly people and the ar archaeologists and those that know and don't know God, they will tell you in their own writings, using the word pagan, using the word occult. And the unsaved people and professors will say, well, you know, this is the day that people say it is the birthday of Jesus, but it can't be so. Well, we're going to celebrate birthdays. We're going to celebrate, you know, uh, Jesus' birthday. Find me one place in the Bible where God said to honor a birthday. One place I'll do. And I have been accused of, you know, he, he values more the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus than he did the birth of Jesus. All right, the virgin birth of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Find me the celebration of a birthday by the Apostle Paul to the church to the Gentiles. When Jesus himself said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel does, it, does not mention the birth of Jesus, though it's important. You've got to believe the virgin birth. But Paul defined the, the, the gospel, either first or second Corinthians, as Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You better believe I put stock on <coughs> the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ more than the birth. You need the birth. You need the virgin birth. Nowhere it tells you to, to worship the birth. Well, we're going to have a birthday. You only have one birthday. You get a new birth born again why don't you celebrate that one year after year after year well there's some people that have forgotten it yeah because there are notch in your belt you tell them to say this prayer it may not be a salvation and you don't tell them the value of the importance of their prayer or the salvation or the new birth and they have no idea what they've done and they can't remember it I got written in my Bible. I've got dates, the, the, the month, the day, and the year. It's certain people the Lord allowed me to lead to Jesus Christ. Evil is good and good is evil. Goes on to churches. There are churches out there. Rock music and rap music. That's good for the church. There are churches out there. Alcohol is good for the churches. Well, wait, wait till you read a little bit further. There are religions out there. You worship on Saturday, not Sunday. If, if you do it on Sunday, you're the mark of the beast. I had a guy, I had a guy, Christian, glad to see in church age, trying to tell me, trying to put me under the diet of the, uh, the law. Well, you know, they weren't supposed to eat the, the fats. And, and, and from the moment he said that, okay, I'm not listening to you no more. 
Because where God said eat, not eat the fats and all that, that was Jew under the law. Paul says, we, hey, if I can thank the Lord for it, amen, glory to God. I'm not going to listen to you no more, sir. You're putting me under law. Paul wrote a whole book to, to a whole church that was going back under the law. That's evil. You're saying it's good. I don't need to get into the world. There is no true standard in verse 20 today. And even in Isaiah's time. They're doing it in BC 760, and they're doing it in 2020, and they'll probably do it in 2021. And put darkness for light and light for darkness. And bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. They got it all backwards. There was a particular expression growing up as an unsaved man. I wish I could use now, but I'm not going to. Woe unto them, another woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes. What is their wisdom? What they say about themselves. I have dealt with pastors like that. You can't tell them nothing behind their, their ivory desk. How dare you come into my office and tell, okay. And prudent. Prudent is great in their own sight. We're, we're elegant. We got wise. We're, we're. And in all reality, you're not wise and you're not prudent. You're foolish and you're stupid. But you can't see your arrogancy. That's pride right there. Pride is a sin. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine. Work, look at verse 11. Woe unto them to rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue unto night until wine inflame them. And the harp and the bow and the tabard and the pipe and wine in their feast. 22. Two of the six woes is about alcohol. Well, they're mighty to drink wine. There are people that they have wine and beer drinking content right in the bar room. They have content. Who can drink the most? And men of strength. They got honor. They got strength to mingle strong drink. There's your alcohol. That mingle is only found in Daniel chapter 2, verse 43. Two of the six woes are about alcohol. And yet, evil good and good evil, there are churches out there, of whatever religions, it's okay to drink alcohol. Alcohol is part of their salvation. The mass. The sacraments. My Jesus is not fermented wine. My Jesus is pure new wine grape juice. You got the devil that if your yours has been fermented in yeast pooping. That's what alcohol is. It's yeast that's been pooping. Yeast crap. I don't know. Can I say the word crap? I hope I can say the word crap. Which justify, verse 22, which justify the wicked for a reward. Man, that's not the governments of the world. Did not the priest of God give Judas 30 pieces of silver? If you will betray Jesus Christ. They justified the wickedness of Judas. And the devil entered into Judas. And the reward for him was 30 pieces of silver. And he didn't even keep it. Take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Get rid of Jesus. And we'll pay you. 
did not they say, hey, we need some false witnesses. And they had many false witnesses, and the false witnesses did not agree with the false witnesses. Calling evil good and good evil. Therefore, okay, in lieu of what we have just read, what man is, now the attack of God. Therefore, as the fire devours stubble, man, that's an interesting, that's the judgment seat of Christ. As the flame consumeth the chaff, that's what's left over from the wheat. So their root, verses 8 to 23, and the wild grapes of verses 1 to 7. So their root shall be as rottenness. You know, alcohol rottens your liver and your kidneys. If you don't eat the wild grapes, they get rotten. And their blossom shall go up as dust. He's talking again about those wild grapes of the vine. You, have, you may have pretty flowers, but when the fruit comes, it's a wild, bitter grape. And God wants sweet grapes, verse 20. But when you behold wild grapes and you say the wild grapes are sweet, they're great little Christians. I am proud of my congregation. God said, hey, no, 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 you're wrong. I'm rich. We're great. We have no need of nothing. God said, no, you're wrong. You got it backwards. You're poor, miserable, naked. Don't you see the lies and see in church age and at the time of Isaiah? You, you think it's great, and God says, no, it's not. You think you're sweet, but you're, 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 you're bitter, wild grapes. It's all in the same context of chapter 5. And you know what you do with those moments of those wild, bitter gates? You, you spit them out. What's God do with the church of, of Laodicea? <laughs> the grapes are wild and bitter. The church is lukewarm. Because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and that's not the church. The wild grapes have taken the law of God saying, we don't want it. They are murdering the prophets. And they have murdered the prophets. King Manasseh, the 55 year of his reign was worse. And he was having his children being killed to Molech and killing the prophets. Thou shalt not kill. There was adultery going around. Thou shalt not commit adultery. They were lying. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou, hast, thou shalt have only one God. In Jeremiah, they're worshiping the queen of heaven. They're taking the law. Read on. And despise the word of the Holy One of Israel. I don't care what God says. I don't care what at all. And as that's what people that's what when when a soul winner goes out, however he goes out, knocking on doors, preaching in the street, handing out gospel tracts, dealing with an open however a soul winner goes out with the gospel. I don't want to hear that. Shut them up, call the cops, slam the door, get out of my face, you're out of my will, you're not allowed in my house, you're fired. That's the reaction of, of people who have despised the word of God. How do you despise the word of God in the Laodicean church age? NIV, RSV, 
Easy. What's easy? I don't know. Probably a new version. Anything but the King James Bible. You despise the King James Bible by coming up with your own version. Your own writing. Well, we use a missal and tradition. We use a test another testament of Jesus Christ. We wash we use the watchtower. We got the sword of the Lord. Interesting. Sword of the Lord. Is it King James Bible verses? When John R. Rice wrote against the King James Bible? That's despising the word of God. When a preacher gets up in the pulpit and, and, and the Bible says a mansion, I prepare a mansion for you, and he changes the mansion. That's despising the word of God. When Taylor gets up and says, you SOB, that's despising the word of God. When you remove the blood and you remove the water and you remove 1 John chapter 5, the Trinity, that's despising the word of God. When you don't daily read your Bible and you don't study your Bible, that's despising the word of God. When you don't come to church and you don't even have a Bible, that's despising the word of God. I mean, at least you can use your app on your phone in the church. Just turn off the sound. I mean, you could you you got all kinds of games and apps on your phone. If you're not going to show up your Bible, you can get a Bible on your phone. That's despising the word of God. When the Bible says go into all the world and preach the gospel and you don't preach the gospel, that's despising the word of God. That's the church age. Therefore, therefore, is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people. When you despise the word of God, God's angry with you, including the church age, including the Jews in this Isaiah's time. And you'll get there, oh, I'm just so blessed. I'm just so wonderful. Are you doing what the word of God says? Well, no. Do you read the whole Bible? No. Do you study the whole Bible? No. Do you tell people about Jesus? No. Therefore, you anger the Lord. We have pop rot. We go to movie night. Show me in the Bible. Show me pop luck in the Bible. Show me movie night in the Bible. Show me that bringing them into the church. Or well, I bring my, I bring, you know, lost into the church, my family. And the, show that me in the Bible says they bring them into the church. When Jesus said, go out into the world and preach the gospel. You despise the word of God. Therefore, is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people. Read the Laodicean church aid. God is angry. God is angry in, in the few of the churches of, of, of the seven churches of Revelation. I think there's only two churches that don't get rebuked. Philadelphia and I forget the other one. Better get right or I'll remove your candles. And see. One church. Against his people. Oh, yeah, okay, in Isaiah, that, that's the Jews. The Jews under the law. But if you want to put it to our, if you want to spiritualize it, that's the Christians. He has stretched forth his hand against them. And smitten them. Chastise, chastisement. Hebrews. Babylonians coming in. Titus coming in. Antichrist coming in. The hills did tremble, and their carcasses, death, were torn in the midst of the streets. Babylon, Titus, Antichrist. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. A holy and righteous God can be angry. And when we get to Jeremiah, it's going to be read in a couple places of Jeremiah, God's going to say, don't even pray for them. Don't tell me that that can't happen to Christians.
He will lift up an ensign. That's a flag. And it's not going to be the stars and stripes. To the nations from afar. He's going to lift up a banner. Hey, nations. Here's attention. And will hiss unto them from the ends of the earth. And behold, they shall come with, with speed, swiftly, double speed. God's going to call these nations against Israel, and they're going to come flying. And they're going to come quickly. Assyria already came for Israel north. Babylon's coming. The Romans. And then the world under the Antichrist. You don't believe me? Go back into the book of Judges. When Israel did wrong, God sent the Moabite, God sent the Ammonite, God sent the Philistine. Judges is going to play out again. Doing wrong, repenting, God, okay. Doing wrong, again, right, and then judgment of God, repenting, getting right. Doing wrong, God sends judgment, repenting, getting right. That's gonna, that happens in a Christian life. None shall be weary or stumble. Among them. None shall slumber or sleep. There's no sleepiness in their sleep. Man, go get that Jew. All right. I got a job for you, Nebuchadnezzar. Yes, sir. What is it? I want you to go attack Jerusalem. I'm our way. Siri, I got a job for you. Yeah, I want you to get Israel, man. They're just, all right, going to do it. Titus, I got a job for you. What's that? They didn't want to believe the Messiah. They didn't want to do right. I want you to sack that city. All right, sir. You wait to the you wait till God gives the Antichrist his the permission. Watch. Job chapter one. The Antichrist is of the devil, right? Job chapter one. Uh, and the devil and God are having talk. Verse 11. But put forth thy hand now, the devil speaking, and touch all that he has, and he will curse thee to thy faith. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. Only, all right? And there were days when his sons were indoors reading. Verse 14, there came a messenger, Oxford plowing the feeding. Boom. Verse 16, while he was yet speaking, there came another one. Boom. Verse 17, while he was yet speaking, boom. Verse 18, while he's speaking, the children are dead. All right. Verse chapter 2, verse 4. Uh, verse 6, and the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he's in thy hand, but save his life. And Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sword. Look how instant that is. Look how instant. All right, Satan, boom. Okay. That's what's happening here. You realize when God gives the Antichrist, boom, he, he ain't going to wait a minute. He ain't going to wait an hour. He's not going to sit down right in his, 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 his calendar. Okay, here I go. That's what's happening here. When God calls the nation, listen, I want you to go chastise my people. All right, yes, sir. Adolf Hitler, yeah, I got a job for you. Those those Jews that they, they need to be God. And the words are probably not even out of the mouth of God, out of God yet. Satan says, "For hey, I got the perfect man." Uh -huh. You better not. You better not. You better not despise the word of God. History. To, oh, we don't want to do history. Despise the word of God. Who is the first person to despise the word of God? Eve. Look what happened. Who despised the word of God after that? Cain. He knew what offering to bring. Who despised the word of God? The entire world said for no in his family. Who despised the word of God? David, when he saw a woman washing herself. Who despised the word of God? Solomon, when he got multiple wives, went to Egypt, got horses, and had gold and silver multiplied. Who despised the word of God? Peter, often.
and we're surrounded by churches, whatever religion, whatever denomination, including the Baptists that despise the word of God. And they do it in the name of God. They're so deceived. Revelation chapter 3. And God's in charge. Did not God say as far as they have? Uh, uh, heaven? Everybody come up here? Heaven, yeah. I want, I want somebody to go down there and I want you to deceit the purpose of Ahab. I'll do it, Lord. Who are you? I'm a lying spirit. John 8, 44. Okay, go out and deceive. Deceive his prophets. When you got these churches and religions and some of the Baptist churches, they're being deceived from the false prophets of the, of the ministries. Yeah, it's Satan, but God allows Satan. You also forget that Paul said, you know, Satan has his own ministers right into the carnal church, 2 Corinthians, I think that's 11. And God allowed it. Why? Because that's what you want. You want to make money and all that? Fine, I'll send a man who will preach the gospel. You don't have to listen to him, but he'll go. He's willing. Neither shall they gird, neither shall the girdle of, of their loins be loose, nor the latch of their shoes shall be broken. Somehow they're not marching, but they're coming awfully quick. They're putting their armor on and they're not taking it off. Boy, if there's anybody who has a zeal for God, it's the enemy of Israel. Against the sins of Israel. Whose arrows are sharp. And all their bowls bent. They're ready to go. Their horse's hoof shall be counted like flint. And their wheels like a whirlwind, quick and ready to go. Their roaring shall be like a lion. Oh, our adversary, the, the lion, who is an imitation of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Guess who the enemy is? And you know what happens in Job 1 and 2? God, you see what that Christian in that church is doing down there, that Christian or that church? God, you know how many times I have to bring this charge up to you? Are you going to constantly let them do that, what they're doing? Jesus, is it under the blood? No. <laughs> really God it's not under blood you. how often do you think that God's going to take that so you say okay go to you know when we sin and we don't confess our sin we don't put it under the blood of Jesus Christ and when, God, when the devil goes up before God and accuses us the accusers of the brethren and there's no blood to be pled we make the devil happy and not God and how often do, will the devil be pleased and the devil be pleased and the devil be pleased and the devil be pleased before God said, enough! Go get him. I've had it. Angry. I am tired of him getting happy with, with, those, with that Christian or that group of Christians. I'm tired. Go get him. As a father pities a child, so he chastises him. Uh, Hebrews 12 or 13. God gets so angry with Judah and Jeremiah. Jeremiah, don't. Jeremiah is praying. God says, I don't want you to pray no one. Shut up. I think he says it two or three times. Stop the prayer. I ain't listening about you. You're really in trouble. When God said, I don't want to hear it. You're in trouble. 
Can you get too far? Oh, yes, you can. And Paul warns the church. One of the things Paul warns the church is, listen, that Lord's Supper, not the Lord's birthday, the Lord's Supper. There are people who are sick. There are people who are dying because they're not doing it right. Lion. They shall roar like young lions. Energetic. Yea, they shall roar. Lay hold upon the prey. That would be Israel. Judah. And shall carry it away safe. <laughs> That's not what a lion does. <laughs> I read somewhere when a lion's get a hold of a body, there's the, the heel bone. And there's another bone that's usually only left. You know, God just told Isaiah to say, you're going away by the, by the enemy. But they're going to keep you safe. Gee, I wonder where that is in Babylon. And all happens to Jeremiah. None shall deliver it. Nobody's going to come in and rescue Israel. One of, the, one of the prophets, they write, Judah, Babylon comes in and, and the, the people of Judah start running. Esau or the Edomites are there on the, on the, on the Jordan River capturing Jews and bringing them to Babylon. Hey, we caught these Jews. What will you give us? Hey, you can't let these guys get away. They tried to get away. And uh, I forget, one of the prophets talked about that. It's all about Esau and their rebuke. Uh, oh, it was Obadiah. One of them. Yeah, Obadiah. Obadiah is talking about the, the Edomites. During this time coming Jeremiah, the Jews are trying to flee, and, he, and the Edomites, hey, you missed these. And they're over there at the Psalms say, rise it, rise it, get rid of it, burn it, yay! All cheer for Babylon, yay! And the Edomites will get clobbered. Babylon got clobbered by a drunken man and a party one night. And overnight, the whole party was destroyed. Yeah. And in that day, that's interesting, they shall roar against them like a roaring of the sea. And if one look unto the land, behold darkness and sorrow, and the light is darkened in the heavens thereof. Huh? You call light darkness, you call darkness light, that's what you're going to get. You're going to reap what you sow. You're going to reap what you sow.